Hello, my name's Nick Dumbreck and I'm the current chair of the CIRA Global Association. It's a great pleasure for me to welcome you to the CIRA Global Risk Conference 2021. Four days of presentations from experts on a wide range of risk topics. Next slide, please. I'll say more about the conference itself later in this introduction, but I will start by talking a bit about the CIRA credential. Next slide, please. The idea for a single global high quality enterprise risk management credential for actuaries was first aired at a meeting of actuarial association presidents about 15 years ago. The concept was that it would be governed centrally, but awarded by local associations and portable between associations. So if someone moved associations, they could take it with them. It would be based on a common syllabus defined from the ground up to meet the needs of actuaries working in risk management. It was felt that this would enhance and promote the brand of the actuarial profession and position it to take a leading role in risk management globally, and that it might act as an early step towards a more global actuarial profession. Now, at the same time, the Society of Actuaries was developing its own credential, and it was hoped that the Society could be persuaded to take part in the global initiative. The Society of Actuaries launched its version of CIRA in 2007, but it subsequently agreed to adapt its syllabus to join the global venture. Next slide, please. It took a while to get everything in place, but at the International Actuarial Association meeting in Hyderabad in 2009, a treaty was signed which formed the basis of the CIRA credential. The person in the centre of this picture is Fred Rowley from Australia. He was the driving force behind the creation of CIRA. And the person to his right is Mike McLaughlin, who was the prime mover behind the Society of Actuaries initiative. Following signature of the treaty, detailed arrangements were put in place and the first awards of the new Global CIRA were made in 2011. Next slide, please. This is uh, a build-up slide, so if you can just um, show all the bullets uh, together. So the CIRA Global Association grants actuarial organisations the right to award the CIRA credential to actuaries who have satisfied the education and training requirements set out in the CIRA Global Treaty. The CIRA Global Association is the governing body, but it's also responsible for administration and for promoting the credential. It does that by making material available to member associations to promote CIRA locally, but also by arranging or participating in events like this to spread the world word. The CGA works hard to ensure consistency of standards, and it also maintains and protects the intellectual property rights, the CIRA brand. Uh, and it has 29 treaty member associations. Next slide, please. Twenty-three of those associations have been granted the power to award the CIRA credential. Uh, this uh, map shows the uh, distribution of those 29 associations around the world. From the early days, uh, the uh, credential has been represented on five continents. There's particularly strong take up in Europe uh, and nothing yet in South America, but we, uh, we hope that that will change uh, in due course. Next slide, please. 
Uh, again, this is a build up slide, so if you can show the whole lot. The CIRA uh, credential is specifically for actuaries, and to become a CIRA, you have to be qualified as an actuary to the level specified by the International Actuarial Association syllabus. Uh, you also have to uh, be examined in the risk management topics covered in the syllabus, which is reviewed regularly to make sure it stays up to date. As would be expected from a credential for actuaries, it covers quantitative as well as qualitative aspects of risk management. And behind these broad topic headings are detailed objectives, which specify the depth of coverage of each subtopic, as well as the breadth. Many of the award signatories rely on assessment by one of three organizations, the European Actuarial Academy, which has a specific uh, course for CERA, or the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries, or the Society of Actuaries. And that makes the process of uh, ensuring consistency of standards a lot easier than it would be if we had 23 entirely separate systems. We have a review panel with members from all the awarding associations, uh, which um, conducts regular and thorough reviews of syllabus coverage, both breadth and depth, and the adequacy of the assessments, whether they're covering the syllabus properly and to the, to the required depth. And uh, award signatories may also seek approval uh, when they become award signatories for a one-off programme to award a limited number of CIRA designations to experienced practitioners. That's how I got my CIRA credential. Next slide, please. This is a breakdown of uh, CIRA holders by member association. It's 10 years since the global credential was launched, uh, and we have just three uh, short of 6,000 CIRAs at the end of May, which is um, an impressive achievement, I think. The Society of Actuaries still accounts for over half of them. Australia has the highest take up rate as a proportion of its actuaries, around 19%. And I think it's fair to say that the highest take up rate tends to be among associations that have an ERM option as part of their fellowship qualification. So there's no need to take further exams after becoming an actuary. Next slide, please. So look into the future. Well, um, the number of actuaries working in risk management is certainly increasing steadily. The COVID-19 pandemic has raised the profile of risk management and emphasized the cost to society of governments failing to prepare for and mitigate known risks. A thorough understanding of risk management is becoming increasingly important to all actuaries. And I think there's a case for building more of the CIRA syllabus into the basic actuarial education. There is an increasing number of CIRAs in influential positions, uh, but a fairly high proportion of CIRAs are still under 35, so we can expect that trend to continue. And of course, there's plenty more to be done, especially to raise awareness of the value of the CIRA credential among employers. Next slide, please. So now on to the CIRA Global Risk Conference 2021. This is a four day event with 24 presentations involving 30 speakers. Uh, we have a combination of live and recorded content and you'll be able to submit questions to the speakers for most of the live sessions. So please do take advantage of this opportunity. 
We're covering a wide range of risk management topics, and it's all available on ActuView from the comfort of your home or office and will remain available after the conference, and it's all free of charge. Next slide, please. Now, I'm not going to go through the programme in detail, but just to summarise, the first three days offer a combination of live and on-demand presentations. Most of the live presentations start at 0900 or 1400, that's 9 o'clock or 2 o'clock, uh, British summer time, except on Wednesday when there's an early start at 8 o'clock. Not surprisingly, the most popular subject areas are climate risk, cyber risk and COVID-19. And it will be good to hear the different perspectives on those hot topics. But there are a lot of other risk management topics being covered over the four days, and there should be plenty of sessions of interest to everyone. Uh, can you just go uh, through the next um, two slides uh, slowly and then uh, stay on the Thursday the 17th of June slide? So Thursday is different. On Thursday, we have seven live presentations intended to work well for different time zones. They're all conveniently timed for those of us in Europe. And I will be back chairing on Thursday morning and Thursday evening. Next slide, please. Now, putting on an event like this involves a great deal of effort, and I have a lot of people and organisations to thank. First of all, I'd like to thank the organising committee chaired by Ron Hersmith from the Netherlands. Uh, they've put in a huge amount of work to get everything in place. With Ron on the committee are Yvonne Lynch from Ireland, Fred Rowley, uh, the first chair of the Sierra Global Association from Australia, Tom Evans, the secretary to the CIRA board, and Martin Oymans from ActuView. I'd also like to thank our sponsors, Milliman and RGA, whose contributions have enabled us to make this a free event. Next slide, please. And of course, our speakers. Uh, we were delighted to the with the response uh, to uh, the call for papers. We have 30 speakers. And I won't mention them individually, but just uh, to call out Eberhard Muller, uh, one of the presidents who signed the treaty in 2009, who will be speaking on Thursday. Next slide, please. I'd like to thank ActuView for working with us to host this event. They've gone to great lengths to make sure everything works smoothly. And we look forward to continuing our partnership with ActuView. So here's the continued growth and success of the CIRA Global Association. And if you'd like to know more about CIRA, please visit our website, www.ciraglobal.org. We'd like to put on more events of this type. I won't promise when, and so your feedback on the conference will be very welcome. And finally, Enjoy the conference. Thank you very much.